Greetings. My name is Emmanuel Sikali with the National Center for Education Statistics. I am the brand chief for reporting and dissemination. Today, I will introduce you to the resources that NAEP has available on the web that related directly to our stakeholders from private schools. I will start this presentation with a short video to set everything into context. The National Assessment of Educational Progress, also known as NAEP, or the Nation's Report Card, is the largest continuing and nationally representative assessment of what students know and can do in various subjects. Private schools have participated in NAEP for decades. For many subjects, private school students score higher on average than their public school peers. This has been true across time and grades. In 2013, private school students scored 5 to 19 points higher on average than students in public schools in mathematics and reading at grades 4 and 8. In 2014, 8th grade students in private schools scored 16 points higher on average than public school students in civics and 14 points higher on average in U.S. history. In more recent years, Results for private schools have not been available for NAEP subjects like mathematics, reading, science, civics, U.S. history, and others. In order to provide NAEP results for private schools, at least 70% of the selected schools must participate. Parents, educators, and other stakeholders are interested in the performance of private schools. When participation rates are met, NAEP has a positive story to tell about private school student performance across the nation. NAEP needs private schools to participate so we can provide valuable results for private schools. NAEP, giving private schools a voice in the national education conversation. So the title of our presentation today is NAEP, using the items and analyzing the NAEP data. So we will explore NIP's resources available online to access and analyze our data. NIP has two main components, the main NIP and long-term trend. The long-term trend is our oldest assessment. We started assessing students using the long-term trend since the 70s. Back then, we, we assessed students at age 9, 13, and 17 and the results are available at the national level for public and non-public schools. Starting from the 90s, we transitioned to assessing students at the grade level. That is MENIP. Results from MENIP are available at the national level for public and non-public schools at grade eight and 12, but we also have results at the state level for public school students only at grade four and eight. And we also have results for some selected urban district for public school students at grade four and eight. NIP is commonly referred to as the nation's report card. It is also known as the common yardstick because it enables us to look at students' achievement and learning experiences in various subjects. NIP results are meaningful for education policy and practices since 1969. Results are available, like I said earlier, at the national level. Again, national level for public and non-public schools at the state level and 12 urban districts for, for public school students. NIP data analysis tools enables us to create statistical table chart maps, search and download sample test questions, take sample tests online. Users can explore decades of results and the national trend starting from the 90s and 1973. We can see the changes in, in the student score across this time period. So what are the tools that we will cover today? I will mainly talk about the NIP Data Explorer, the item map, the NIP questions tool, 
but looking at how I am presenting and how I am navigating the tools, you can navigate the additional tool like the state profile, district profile, state comparison tool, and state mapping tools. So what is the NIP Data Explorer? The NIP Data Explorer, it's an interface that, that enables the user to explore the NIP data to query, visualize, and analyze the assessment data results using a user-friendly interface to access our complex data. The user can customize the queries, select the subject and grade, the year of the assessment of interest, create interactive visualization tools, and so on. The key variables are student demographics, achievement level, trend over time, and comparison between different student groups. So this is our NIP Data Explorer. Here with the NIP Data Explorer, you can explore high school transcript studies, long-term trend NIP, NIP Indian education, and school and teacher questionnaire studies. So these are the different, these are the different types of end resources available for the NDE. When you get to this landing page, you have an opportunity here to search from some tables that have been created and that exist that are cached in the NDE. The alternative option is to actually go into the ND yourself, choose your subject of interest. Let's for here, I will search for mathematics results for students at grade four. And by default, you have the most recent assessment and the composite scales. So let me talk a bit about the composite scales. Mathematics is a combination of algebra, data analysis, statistics, geometry, measurement scale, and number and operations. In the NDE, you have the opportunity to see, you have the option to see the overall score in mathematics, or you can focus on each of the subscale and see the score for each of the subscales. For this presentation, I will, I will only focus on, on the composite scale, but you can go back and play with whatever subscale you are interested in. So let's select the jurisdiction. In the slide earlier, I told you that we have the results at the national level for public and non-public schools. But here, let's just focus on national. As you notice in the presentation that we showed at the beginning, we do not have enough participation of private schools to have private school results available here. You have the option here also to select the states for which you want to see the results. For, for our presentation, let's just start with the national level, national results, and then we'll come back and see how you can generate results for the other jurisdictions. For the variable, variable of interest, we can select all students, and then let's select gender. So that means that we'll have the overall results of all students, and for gender, we'll have results for male, for male and female students. Now, for each of the variables present here, you can see the detail for the variable. So here we see that for gender, we have the results, the results from male and female, and these results are available starting from 1990 up to 2022. So let's hide the details and let's go to the statistics. NIP reports average scale scores, achievement level, percentiles, and percentages. Why percentages? The NIP assessment selects a sample of students in the nation. That sample is representative of the student population in the nation. So for this example, we'll just focus for now on the average scale scores and achievement level discrete. Why discrete? Discrete meaning that we will see the proportion of students who are below basic, at basic, proficient, or advanced. Had we chosen cumulative, we will have students uh, who are at basic or above, proficient or above, or advanced. So let's focus here. For this example, we'll just see the achievement level, we see the, the discrete achievement levels. So here we'll have two reports. One will be for all students and, and one will be for gender. 
Let's generate the report first, and then I will explain why we have the global formatting option. Let's generate the report. Once I click on that, the reports are broken into two. We have all students here, and we have gender here. So let's see the results for all students. To do that, we have to click on show report data. So we see here that the average scale scores for all students in 2022 was 236. 25% of students were below basic, 39 at basic, 29 at proficient, and eight at advanced. Now let's go here and show and see, look at the results by gender. We see here that at the national level, male students had a score of 239 and female had an average score of 233. They were 27% of female students below basic, 41 at basic, 27 at proficient, and five at advanced. Because these results are from samples, we cannot really just look at the 239 and say that male student score did better than female students. We have to, we have to perform a, stat a statistical test. To do that, we click on our significance test. We are comparing the categories of the variable. We only have one variable here, gender. So we compare the categories. After we have clicked on that, we have a box that appears around male and female. We have the choice here to select our reference group. So let's let's select, let's, let's choose female as our reference group. So it shows that the star here means that there is a significant difference. So male students are scoring, are doing better than female students, and the, the percentage distribution are also different. The percentage of students, percent of female below basic is larger the percentage of male above basic. This means in other terms that the distribution of the female, of, of the female score is skewed to the left, while that of male students is a little bit to the right. So this is our first example with the NDE. Now let's go back. So let's go, so let's go back and create a new report. This time we will add more variables. So we are here. So let's choose, let's still choose mathematics. At grade four, we will leave these two default as selection. Now let's select the jurisdiction. I will go with state and I will select all the states. This, is, this will allow me, this will enable me to see the results for all the states. For the variable, I just select uh, all students. And for the statistic, I will select the average scale score. Let's go to the general formatting option. When we go to the general formatting option, this allows us to uh, control the statistics that, are, that we are generating from the tables. So here we can show, we have the option to look at the long variable description or just the variable name, as you can see here. If you are selecting, looking at, at the results across multiple years, here we have the option to arrange the years to appear as the most recent year first or the oldest first. For the results, we can choose the number of decimal, we can see the number of dec uh, decimal places, the precision. I will just, select here the standard error. Because the results are from sample, we have to see the standard error around the results. So let's save this, and then let's generate a report. So we can double check here that everything is correct. We have all the state and everything is all the students. Let's generate a report. Let's show report data. So this is what we have. We have the results here at the national level. In the previous example, it was 236. 
but in truth, it is 235.96. And we can also go here and see the results for all the jurisdictions. Now, we know here at assessment division that this is hard. This is really hard for anyone to see. So let's see if you can generate a chart for this result. We have the national, the national or the states. We have the year of the study, the average scale scores. And what type of chart can we generate? We can generate a bar graph. We can generate a column chart and we can generate a line chart. So let's just create a bar chart. This would be very ugly to see, but let's just try and see what we get. So this is only showing us here at the for all the students, because here we have the nation. Yeah, we have the option here to select to create a bar chart for each for each state. So now let's go back. Let's go back again to the. So I'm doing it this way for everybody to see that we can actually play around. You can play around with this as, as you want. Let's click on create a significance test. So we want to compare all the jurisdiction, all students, and the average scale score. To do this, we have the option here to either look at a table or look at the map. The map is actually what I'm trying to show here. Let's click, click, click on map. Let's generate the output. So this is what we have. We can see here that national results were 235.96, as we, as we saw from the previous example. We can see here that 15 jurisdiction, the one in the dark blue score higher than the nation. The one in the light blue, not so different from the nation, and the 20 other score lower than the nation. And we have data for all the jurisdictions. So everything is compared to the nation. Now, you have the option here to control the reference group for which you are you want to make the comparison. So let's go here and select Massachusetts as a comparison group. The comparison is done, is performed right away. And we can see here that the score in Massachusetts were 241.73. Only one jurisdiction score higher than Massachusetts. It was, it was the Department of Defense schools here. And 14 jurisdictions were not, that, were not that different from Massachusetts, while 38 scores significantly lower than Massachusetts. Now, let's choose another jurisdiction as a reference group without any particular, without, I'm going to choose Virginia because I live in Virginia. So let's choose Virginia. And you see that the map will actually change. You, you can share your output. You can send it in an email as a Twitter, you can as a Twitter post or Facebook. So we have, we have these options available. Now let's go back and let's go back to the, this particular report that we just created. We assume that you saw this for mathematics grade four and you ask yourself, how about reading grade four? What does that look like? We have, the, we have the option here for you to copy the report and modify. So you can go here and you can change this to reading and everything remains exactly the same. So after we copied and modified the report, we can just go here and click on show report data. And we have the same results now for reading at grade four in the nation. Uh, let's see, let's go and try to generate exactly the same map for reading. So we go here and we select all jurisdiction, all students. We select the map and then we generate the output. And this is the corresponding map for reading at grade four for all the jurisdictions and the nation. And likewise, we can choose the reference state and we can see the comparison. In this case, it's Pennsylvania. So in general, these are some of the things that we can do in the NDE. I will show one last example, and then I will transition into explaining, into giving some interest, into helping give some meaning to the NIP scores. Let's generate a new report. Let's, let's choose reading, grade eight.
for all the states. For the variable of interest, we will select race ethnicity. Let's select this one. And also, and, and, and so let's see the details of this race ethnicity. It basically gives the category, it's a categorical variable that gives us that have, the categories of the variable are white, black, Hispanic, Asian, American, Indian, Alaskan natives, native Hawaiians, Pacific Islanders, and then two or more race. This variable is available since 2011. And for the statistic, look at average scale scores and the percentages. So let's generate, let's create a report. We will have two, two reports for grade eight reading. Let's look at the first one. This is, here is all students. And the second one is race ethnicity. I am not going to look at all students. We've had several examples where we look at all students, but let's focus on the one for categorical variable, for, for, for categorical variable. Let's show the report data. This is a big table. So what do we have? What do we have here? We have the national results, the average scale score for reading in 2022 at grade eight was 268.44. You send an error of 0 0.355. This is the average score for white students in the nation. The average scale score for black students was 243 and so on. So we know how to read that. So now let me explain the percentages, what the percentages mean. 47% here indicates that 47% of students at grade eight were white, while 14% were black, 28% were Hispanic, 6% were Asian, 1% were American Indian and Alaskan natives, and we didn't have enough in the sample that we didn't have enough. We are, we are not able to really report a number for native Hawaiians and other Pacific Islanders. We didn't have enough of them in the sample. However, we have the scale. And then for students of two or more races, we have 4% and we have the scores. So that's how we will read this. Now, the table is actually very big. So uh, let's go here and let's... Um, Let's create some charts. We can do a chart for the average scale score or the percentages. So let's create a bar chart. So the variables is race ethnicity and uh, we want to group the results by what? We can group them by jurisdictions. Let's create a chart. Let's look at the legend. Blue is white. You see the legend here, and you can basically go in here and look at look at the results for for each of the for each of the states. So that's what we have here. This not this doesn't look very this doesn't look very good, but this is this is what you can do here. Let's create a significance test. We can select all the jurisdictions. You can only compare white students. And we can have a map. This map will only show us the results for white students. And you can go on and do the same thing for each of the other uh, race categories. So this is in general, some of the functionalities of the NDE. Now, Let's try to make sense of what the scores mean. Here we have that the national scores for white students was 268.44. What does that mean? The other tool I'm going to talk about is the NAEP item map. So what is the NAEP item map? The NAEP item map, let me show first what, an example of what it is, then I will like, I give some more explanations. We just looked at, we just looked at reading, grade eight and the year was 2022. 
So let's look at this atom map. So when we saw that the average scale score for white students was 268, the best way to try to understand or give some meaning to the 268 is that the 268 corresponds to this point here. The type of item that corresponds to that score is recognize the reason for, uh, for idea at the end of an article based on information from the beginning of the article. This is a simple question, and it is a short response. A student scoring at this, when students score at this level, what does that mean? It means that all the items below, below will have been easier for these students and everything above will have been harder for them. And that particular score maps at the basic level. So it means that the average scale score of white students was mapping at the basic level. So this is how we try to give a meaning. I've tried to give a meaning to the score. Uh, depending on the item, depend, uh, also uh, uh, for reading, we have two, sc two scale scores, literacy and informational. And based on the coding, here you can know what type of item that was. Let's see what, what that will uh, look at the item map for mathematics, grade four. This is what the item map looks for mathematics. And I, and I mentioned earlier that mathematics was a combination of all of these, of all of these subscales. So you can click on each of them and see the item map for each of the subscales. The next thing I will present here is, is a NIP questions tool. So when you look, some of these questions have a link. So if you have to click on one of them, for example, you first you will see the type of the, the, the item itself that the student were presented. So this is, the, this is that particular item. You can see the scoring guide, basically D, it was a multiple choice question and D was the correct answer. And uh, you can look at the performance data. You can see that 53% of students got it correct. 18 chose C, 14 chose the B category and 14 chose the A category. So this is uh, so this, uh, this enables you to see the type of item that students were able that was either easier or was uh, harder for students. The next tool I will present is the NAEP questions tool. Every assessment year, we released about 20% of the sample questions that were presented to the students. This, in, this helps the stakeholders see, have a sense of what we are actually administering to the students. Here you have the option to try a pop quiz. So for the pop quiz, we have 11 subjects and you can actually explore the questions. Let's search. I will show you how to search for questions. When you click on the search, you have here to select the subject, the grade, the year, and you can, and then some other, and other dimensions of the question. Let's start with mathematics. Let's go with mathematics. Grade four. Let's just search for now. So we see that there are 30 questions that are available. If you want to filter further, you can go here and select if you want what, what subscale you are interested in, which will be, which is one, one of these five. And, and until 2003, we have some other classifications of the items. And then from 2005 and so on, we have the complexity. Let's just search everything. And for types of question, we have multiple choice, selected response, short concluded response, and extended constructed responses. And we also have the difficulty level. Let's just get all the questions. So this gives us a list of all the questions and the year when the questions were released. What we have here is mostly questions from the 2022 assessment. So let's see, let's select, let's select some a sample question and see what the question looks like. It's a short concerted response. Name a location of a specific coordinate. Let's select a couple of questions. Let's see. 
we have the option here to download, select the question, the, the scoring guide. You can select, you can publish these questions as a Word document or a Word document. Let's preview. We should have this for the three questions that we selected. So here are the questions that are selected. The first one is the name or location specified by coordinates. So this is the first question. And the answer is D, because this is D. This is the second question. And, the, and here is the, the last question. How can one use the NAEP questions tool? After we have selected these questions, you have the option, we have the option here for, for a teacher, for example, to decide to select some questions and publish and publish this test online. How does that work? You give the number of test takers, or you can assign a roster to the students that you want to take the assessment, that you, the test that you have created, and then you can have an assessment due date and so on. And then you can publish a question online and then send the link to the students and they can take the test and you can compare the results. You can compare how your students are doing, how the students in a specific class are doing compared to the nation. So let's go back to the presentation. Uh, at the end here, we have a lot of resources and some links for you for the Need Data Explorers. And then we have the state profiles, the district profile, the state comparison tool. If you have any questions, please feel free to send us an email and we will uh, answer your questions. Thank you.